we go over there? Where do we have to go? It can't be far. Damn it, we need to get out before we end up like everyone else. Give us cover. We're almost there. I'm so sorry about what happened to your friend. What the hell? Who are these people? What do they want? They are searching for this chamber. What? Why? There's nothing here. On the contrary. Everything is here. We stand before a gateway. Behind which the greatest treasure of all mankind is concealed. What do you mean? This monastery guards a secret that is centuries old. But the world is not yet prepared for its revelation. I tell you this only because you will shortly become the last person who can prevent the key to the secret from falling into the hands of those barbarians. What is that? This is a key. At some point, they will find this chamber and break down the door. The key must no longer be here when that happens. Take it. Use it. And get it to the other side. Then... You will... Understand everything. We just wanted to help. Now I'm the last one left alive, and I don't even know who's trying to kill me. Or for that matter, why? Ancient secrets, apparently. A great treasure hidden here in this chamber. Maybe that's what they're after. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I need to get out and get in touch with England. Dead. The monks gave their lives to protect the artifact and this chamber. He spoke of a great treasure. Sounds like we know why they came under attack. Nothing more I can do. I need to use this key and get out. Now. Don't budge. There's a recess in this plinth here, but nothing else interesting. It fits into the recess here. I haven't the slightest idea what that might do, but according to the monk, it's the only way out of here. I hope he was right. Well, Lieutenant, how are things progressing? All resistance has been quashed. The monastery is under our control. And the chamber? Uh, we haven't found it yet. There must be a secret passage 
That is how the monk and the Tommy got out. At least, that is what our prisoner claims. And has he told us in the meantime what his unit was doing here? Yes, he was most talkative. They were here to map the region. Apparently, his lieutenant was using maps made by some Hong Kong cartographer who came this way before. Aha! Coincidence is a strange thing. Well, we managed to contain things this time, but I don't want any further interruptions. We will extend our patrols, and I have ordered that the airspace be monitored by our fighters. You are a soldier. You're happy to wait and fight. I, on the other hand, am a scientist, and I believe in preventing the fight in the first place. Send someone to Hong Kong immediately. Eliminate the cartographer once and for all, and destroy any records he may have. If needs be, pay some triads from Hong Kong to take care of the job. We need to deal with this quickly. We must do everything possible to prevent anyone from turning up here again and interrupting the operation. This mission is too significant, and we have just about reached our goal, Lieutenant. The future of the Third Reich is in our hands. How's business, Shen? Can't complain. How about you? <laughs> Still moving stuff you shouldn't be. Have you ever tried turning a profit the honest way? It's tough. I've got bills to pay. Besides, snatching a deal from the tongs is all the fun I get around here. Fenton, Fenton. The tongs are not to be played with. These are serious people. <laughs> Shen, I didn't know you cared. I'd be surprised if Tong even knew who I was. Oh, really? He was here looking for you last night. Finally! The celebrity status I've always craved. You need to relax, old friend. Fenton, you are my best customer, and for that reason alone, I'm going to give you some good advice. Watch yourself, or you'll be at the bottom of the harbour before I can say rum. And you can say rum pretty damn quickly. Not as quickly as you can drink it. Didn't you learn in the forces not to underestimate your enemies? Christ, you make it sound like we're in a fight to the death. That may yet prove to be the case. I strongly suggest you forget smuggling and get your kicks elsewhere. Okay, okay, I'll be careful. Promise. Speaking of getting my kicks, you guys have a new singer. Yes, but you're not getting your kicks with her either. She's not into men like you. A lot of guys have tried, a lot of guys have failed. Shen, that sounds like a challenge. I'll spring you my best whiskey if you get so much as a room number. Shen, I'll be back in two minutes. You'd better get down to the basement and dig out that bottle. Piece of cake. In two minutes flat, not only will I have a hot date, but an excellent bottle of whiskey to go with it. Life is sweet. Your song has moved me in a way I barely thought possible. 
The least I can do is buy you a drink. Nice try, but I don't drink. Thanks. If the other guys are so easily put off, no wonder you've been waiting for me to come along. Come on, what can I get you? <laughs> okay, I do enjoy a glass of champagne after a show. You're more than welcome to buy me one, but I intend to enjoy it in my room, alone. Ah, oh, go on. Give me one more chance. Wow. I'm looking at that dress wondering if it's the feathers that make the bird, or the other way around. Either way, you look hot. I'll take that as a compliment, even if it's a dubious one. Dubious or not, the question remains. Perhaps we need to get to know each other a little before we answer it. Oh, just out of interest. Is that a tulip or a rose in your hair? It's a lily. Not big on treating a girl with flowers, huh? I can see why you're single. I'm always willing to learn something new. Maybe you can help me. Tell me everything I need to know about women, compliments and presents. I'm not a teacher for wannabe Casanovas. For the life of me, I can't work this girl out. Maybe I need a better plan of attack. I can already feel Shen grinning behind my back. Well, at the risk of you thinking I'm a total fool, please forget everything about these last few minutes and let's start over from the beginning, shall we? Your song has moved me in a way I barely thought possible. The least I can do is buy you a drink. Nice try, but I don't drink. Thanks. If the other guys are so easily put off, no wonder you've been waiting for me to come along. Come on, what can I get you? <laughs> okay, I do enjoy a glass of champagne after a show. Ah, oh, go on. Changed your mind yet? The barman, Shen. He's a good friend of mine. I'll have him serve a glass of the best champagne this place has to offer. And I'm sure the two of you will enjoy it very much. Well, if I'm honest, this whole thing's been a massive crash and burn. Ah, well. I'm out of her league anyway. These guys are with the tongs. Looks like Shem was right. They must have found out that I snatched that last deal off of them. One on one I can handle. Two on one's pushing it. And knowing my luck, there's about 20 more of them waiting outside. I think a tactical retreat is in order. I wouldn't like to say a hasty one, but that's exactly what I mean. It looks like there's still some booze in here. No one will miss this stuff. An empty wok. I better leave the wok where it is. A serving cart. I could rail it across the room, but it's not the sort of explosive distraction that'll get me out of here unnoticed. I'm sure Shen won't give me away, but hey, there's a way through here, and if I remember correctly, it leads backstage to the other exit. But I'll never make it that far as long as Mun Tong is standing at the bar. One of Mun Tong's men. I'd rather he didn't see me. I'm not scared, of course, I just don't want to hurt him.
Okay, let's get the absinthe into the wok. Plat de jour, flambé. How would you like that cooked? Well done. Mais ce dénouement. And other bad puns. Now we're talking. Sending a burning card careening across the room while sneaking out of the door. That's how Fenton Paddock rolls. Dead end, Paddock. My answer makes no difference anyway. You're still going to beat me up, aren't you? Right, kid. This time you're messing with the wrong people. Wake up, Paddock, or you will miss your last flight. Ever done a splash down? I'll laugh later. Now let me out. You don't get it, do you? You know what? I think I literally just got it just now. I'm thinking the whole business expansion thing wasn't such a good idea after all. Indeed. But we have run out of patience. You should have kept out of our business. But you just wouldn't heed our warnings. Hey guys, why don't we just relax and talk about this? I promise I won't get in your way anymore, okay? Too late, Paddock. And once again, we find truth in an old Chinese saying. It is easy to open a business, but it is difficult to keep it running. <laughs> but we don't want to be that heartless. We won't grant you a last wish. But you may decide how you would like to die. Would you prefer to suffocate or drown? You don't have to decide right away, Paddock. Let me explain. Strictly speaking, your little submarine here is completely watertight. So when we throw you into the harbor in a minute, not a single drop of water will make its way inside. You'll then have about 15 minutes of air an agonizing amount of time when you're waiting for death. Only fear and panic will accompany you during your final struggle. You wouldn't even wish that on your worst enemy. Therefore, we have drilled a hole in the lid for you. At first, you will instinctively try to plug the hole with your hand. But if you desist, you can end your suffering that much faster. Let the water flow in and everything will be over in one, maybe two minutes. No, do not thank us, old friend. I think we owe you that much. I agree. Bon voyage, old friend. He won't be causing us any more trouble. Crap. 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 I need a solution. Quick. Crap. It's screwed to the lid of the chest. Let's see if there's anything useful inside. I could use this to loosen the screws on the hinge. Or at least I could if I had any hands left. I'm using one to plug the hole and the other to make light. The corks are tad too small to seal the hole airtight. Why should I light the cork? Why plug an empty bottle?
If only it were that easy. The lids nailed shut. I'll put down the lighter for a moment. It worked. The gooey tar is now sticking to the cork. Perfect. The tarred cork sealed the hole. I can take my hand away now. Okay, that should work. If I manage to put the hinge between the lid and the crate, I might be able to pry it open. Let's try. Good. They didn't stay to watch the show. Usually a time like this is a time for cautious celebration, followed by raucous celebration. Unfortunately, wandering back into triad territory for a drink with Shen is most likely inadvisable. Plus, I'm soaked. Home time, I think. Are you Tong? Moon Tong? How dare you, stranger? What do you want? Can we go somewhere and talk undisturbed, Mr. Tong? Somewhere less lively? We have nothing to fear here. This is our district. If you have something to say, say it. If not, get out of here. Very well. I need some men to do a job for me. Discreetly and efficiently. I was told you would be able to help me. Interesting. We shall see whether I can or cannot once you've told me what this is about. My clients are looking for a man who is supposed to be living here in Hong Kong. He's in possession of something that my clients desire for themselves. And who are your clients? That is not important. Find the person and retrieve the item. That's the job. Well, many people live in Hong Kong. And I'm sure a lot of them are in possession of things that other people want. If you accept this job, you will of course receive more detailed information. Hmm, this sort of work doesn't come cheap, you understand. Money is no issue. My clients have the necessary means. All that matters is that the job is completed to our satisfaction. Then I'd say it's a deal. That's a 1928 Ford Trimotor. More importantly, it's my 1928 Ford Trimotor. They only build 199, and mine's the best of the bunch. State of the art. Ten years ago. Gus, my mechanic. He keeps things from falling apart. He's also my only employee. Hello, Gus. I'm back. Just look at you. Did you forget your umbrella? Nope, I was out swimming. On that topic, a nice bath wouldn't hurt you either. Women like the smell of hard, honest work. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen a man work harder or more selflessly. Hey, I'm the best of the best. Oh, save it. You just make sure the engine starts running again. No problem, boss. 
By the way, there's an officer waiting for you in... the office. An officer? Did he say what he wanted? No, but he said he wanted to wait and speak to you in person. That doesn't sound good. It's just not my day today. Ah, Paddock. You're finally here. Huxley. This is a pretty miserable place to live, Paddock. Shouldn't war heroes be spending their retirement in more comfortable surroundings? Oh, I forgot. You were dishonorably discharged. Thanks for the reminder. What are you doing here? The governor ordered me to find you. It wasn't so easy, since I hadn't the slightest idea how deep in the gutter I'd have to dig. You certainly smell like you belong here. Well, you of all people should know your way around the gutter, Huxley. Watch your mouth. Paddock. There may come a time when the governor won't be there to protect you and I'll be able to drag you to the penitentiary where you belong. Oh, spare me. I'm a civilian now. Deal with it. I was court-martialed and have received my deserved punishment. So leave Lord Weston out of this. You are responsible for the most severe riots in the history of this colony. The Empire conceded a lot in order to regain control. In disobeying your orders, you caused damage that we still feel the consequences of today. The Chai Wang Penitentiary would be a more appropriate punishment, if you ask me. Just let me know when you're done complaining, so I can tune back in. Lord Weston wishes to speak to you immediately. Make sure you get rid of that awful stench. I'll wait in the car. Hmm. What would the governor want? If he sent none other than his adjutant to look for me, it must be important. Better not keep him waiting. Lord Weston's always been good to me. I owe him a lot. Fenton, I'm glad to see you. I hope you'll forgive the short notice. Lord Weston, please, I'm honoured. You have, however, piqued my interest. What's so urgent? Need a first-class flight to London? I'm afraid not, Fenton. I am in a somewhat awkward situation, and I think you might be able to help me. You are, in fact, my only hope. Sounds dramatic. Tell me more. The situation is as follows. As you know, the Chinese have been threatening to annex Tibet for years. I'm broadly familiar, yes. Well, the Empire's official position is not to get involved should a conflict arise. And what exactly is the Empire's unofficial position, Governor? Come, Fenton. One should be prepared for all eventualities. I see. Military intervention? No, no, certainly not. We simply wish to be prepared in the unlikely event that a military conflict arise, and that is why we need to know the lay of the land. No maps of Tibet are currently available. It is, officially, completely uncharted. And what does all this have to do with me? I'm not much of a cartographer. You have enough of your own. Quite right, Fenton. We have, in fact, already sent out an expedition. Entirely off the record, you understand? The Chinese must be kept in the dark. The last thing we need right now are diplomatic complications. The problem is, the expedition disappeared without a trace a few days ago. We haven't the slightest idea what their status might be. You've sent a rescue party? Two. Both returned. Empty-handed. No trace of them. Not a clue. So now what? I can no longer rely on military options. Eventually, the Chinese will get wind of the situation. The matter must be handled with discretion. Fenton, I want you to find our men. Well, I'm certainly flattered. But what makes you think I'd do the job any better? You said yourself you've got no maps. And I'm far from a local expert. Come, Fenton, you had quite the reputation. You've completed, successfully, numerous missions of this nature. 
I, for one, have the greatest confidence in you. Honored, I'm sure, Lord Weston. But like you said, I had a reputation. I don't regret my time with the forces, but those days are over now. When they needed a scapegoat for the winter riots, I stood my ground, dishonorably discharged. So tell me, why should I lift so much as a finger for the Empire now? I realize that, Fenton, and I predicted this response. But you should know, this is about the people, not just the army. With all due respect, sir, appealing to my sense of compassion won't work. Oh, stop being so hard on me. You'll get all the financial support you need, and perhaps I can assist you in settling your little difficulties with the local competition. Tempting, but no thanks, Governor. Any other matter, I'd be happy to help. But there's a file in my life labelled Army, and it's closed. But what if the situation weren't so cut and dried? Enlighten me. Richard, Fenton. Richard was the expedition leader. Richard! You wait till now to tell me that! Fenton, I am the governor, and Richard is an officer. That he is my son shouldn't affect the performance of my duties. That may well be, but it can damn well affect mine. You know how close Richard and I were at the Academy. I have a right to know what's going on, don't you agree? You are right. I know how much Richard means to you. How couldn't I? After everything you've been through. Good. So tell me what I need to know. I'm leaving now. You'll find all the information I've been able to collect in this dossier. Thank you, Phantom. I will never forget what you've done for me. Thank me when I found him. Taxi! Richard, what have you gotten yourself into? I've known you for most of my life, and I've never seen the old man so worried about you. I can understand why as well. No contact for over ten days. Disappeared without a trace 400 miles east of Lassa, in a completely unexplored region the size of England. What the hell happened? Avalanche? Snowstorm? That part of Tibet may as well be the end of the world. I need to stay focused. Stay rational, no matter how hard it is. Can't let my feelings get the better of me. First off, I need some local maps. Unfortunately, the region's never been officially charted. I need Gus to start working double time on the plane so I can get going. Maybe he can find me some maps as well. Might be he knows some pilots who have been out that far. Hey, Gus. Listen, we're going to have to cancel all upcoming jobs. What's wrong, boss? Are you in some kind of trouble? You could say so. I'm going to Tibet. Tibet? What do you want to do in Tibet? Don't say this personally, but I can't talk about it. Actually, you're not even supposed to know I'm flying. Aha, uh -huh. well, if it's none of my business in the first place, I'll just carry on slaving away like nothing happened. I told you, it's nothing personal. I need some maps of Tibet. Maybe you can help me. I realize it's pretty much unexplored, but there must be something out there I can use. Do you know anyone who knows his way around the country? Hmm. Most pilots around here head south. You could try old Wang. Hey, yeah, he mentioned it once or twice. Once or twice? He never stops talking about his time over there. And he reckons he's mapped a great chunk of the place. Hmm. Can't you think of anyone else? Oh, yeah, of course. I know hundreds of people with maps of Tibet just lying around at home. What's the matter with you? Still having a hissy fit over that fight you two had? I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't have a clue what went down with you two, or why Yen quit working here all of a sudden. Nobody tells me anything. But if your quest is so important, I suppose you'll just have to talk to him. Okay, okay. I guess I don't have much choice. Exactly. So, you two haven't seen each other since then? No. And his little niece, uh, what's her name again? Kim. Oh yes, Kim. So, you aren't in touch with her either? No. Why, should I be? I just had an inkling. You spent all that time over there when you were younger. You're practically part of the family. And, well, 
Are you saying she wasn't your type? Nonsense. No idea what she's been up to. You know anything new? Well, I did run into Wang at the club. Talked about the old days a bit. I think he misses flying, but he'd never admit it. He's retired now. He still lives in that old house on Victoria Road. He moved. Don't ask me where to. He never said and I never asked. Great. And how am I supposed to find him? Maybe Shen in the bar can help you out. He makes it his business to know about the punters. Good idea. I'll drop by to see him. How's the engine coming along? I'm almost finished, but there's four screws left over, which is a bit strange. But I'll find somewhere to put them. I hope you're joking. When you're finished, bring my equipment on board and get that bird ready to fly. I want to leave for Tibet tonight. Aye, sir. That's all for now, Gus. See you later. See you later, boss. Documents from Lord Weston. There's information here about Richard's expedition. But it's not an awful lot of good to me right now. Seems like before they disappeared, they were traveling through a region in the Himalayas about 400 miles east of Lhasa, which, of course, is the least explored region in all of Tibet. Without any official maps, I'm going to need some help from somewhere. I have to be careful. I'd like to avoid meeting the triads again. I better make sure the coast is clear. <laughs> <laughs> 